How's it? Today is Tuesday, June 11th. We're moving forward with everything. Um, my programming this week is changing from what I was doing for the last you know, four weeks. And um, I think the only day that's not really changing is the back squat day, which is today. I back squatted 140 for five fives last week. Overhead press 66 for five fives last week. And today we're just going up in those numbers. We're going to 145 and 69. Nice, respectively. Um, I talked with my coach on Sunday before the week started and, and he was saying that like for the back squat, especially given my goal of wanting to squat, you know, 400 pounds soon, soon being a relative term, like by the end of the year, um, he said that I can continue to push the things that I'm pushing on for the back squat because I'm not necessarily like going to be training for anything, any meets upcoming. So um, you can kind of just add the volume and add the intensity as needed. But today it's just uh, five kilos up from last week. And last week was a lot easier than the week before. Um, last week, to, to be fair, I did also put on my belt for the first time. I think one thing that I'm thinking about a lot today is a technique cue that Steve was mentioning yesterday. Steve's my coach. Um, Steve was, not yesterday, sorry, on Sunday. He said that if you are pushing your legs, you know, you can get knee extension and that will can, that can create power on the bar or height on the bar. But you cannot forget about, here's my first set at 145. Uh, these were actually a lot more challenging than I expected them to be. But it, I think it has to do something with the way that I'm thinking about the squat today, which I guess I'm going to go back to right now. Um, you can push your knees to, to create power, but you can also extend your hips, if that makes sense. So extending your hips is like the, the motion of you kind of pushing your hips forward, right? So if you can extend your hips while you're extending your knees, then realistically you can get power on both sides of the squat because in order for you to to execute the squat properly you need to get flexion at your knee essentially you need to bend your knee and you need to get flexion at the hip or essentially you need to allow your hip to fold forward right or your your torso to fold forward and your your basically your hips kind of shoot backwards that that itself is flexion and so if you can get to extend your knee and extend your hips then like that one right there you see, like, that first rep on this set was really solid. This third one was okay. A little bit um, not as good on that one. Ooh, my elbow's hurting on all of these, so I have to kind of uh, slow down a little bit. But the idea of you actively extending your hips is something that people don't really talk about. A lot of times people say you want to keep your back angle the same, right? That is That has been the notion for a long, long time for squatting. And, you know, I... I also have been saying that for forever, but what he was telling me was that if you can get actively extended hips in the squat when you're moving, dynamically um, dynamically extending your hips while you are moving, then you can create more power. And that is an entirely new perspective that I never really heard of until this week. Like, look at how good this is. I think that the... The idea of me keeping my my the weight on that kind of like fourth toe on my on my um, lateral side of my foot, and then a little bit in front of my midfoot, um, as far as like front to back, then it's like that. In addition to extending my hips, is creating a a a a, a uh, technique te technique. It's creating a technique that is really quick in certain positions, but also gives me a little bit more fundamental, um, I guess, correctness. That's not even, that doesn't even make sense. But I, 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 I'm going to continue working on that, especially with the warm ups and stuff. But I think one thing that was kind of weird was after, after the first set of at 145, my left knee was kind of clicky, started to hurt quite a bit when I was walking around. So I kind of just sat down for most of the session today. And then, like, even when I was pressing, like, my left knee was just not... It didn't feel, like... It didn't feel normal, I, I would say. It, it just felt like I was a little bit unstable, but not to the point where I had to stop squatting. Um, here's my first set at 69 of uh, five fives. 
Um, I honestly did not think I was going to be able to do even two sets of five after this first set. But I, I told Brian, I was like, all right, like I'm going to do threes. So then I was like, okay, if I do four threes after this, then, you know, it's going to be almost like I did three sets of five, but two extra reps. Like, look at how hard this rep is. But I ended up doing all five of them. Like, I I don't even know how I how I mustered the kind of like energy to do that. And um, yeah, I, I'm super, super, super proud of that, that I was able to do that. But next week, there's no shot in hell I'm going to do five fives at 72 or even maybe even you know 70 um so i'm gonna probably go down to like a top set of three and then like down sets of five and, and we'll push from there um for my accessories today i did my bulgarian split squats my dip my ghd hamstring curls and then my back extensions um, but i think that the technique is is um extending my hips while extending my my knees is it's gonna benefit me in the long run it's not something I ever thought about. You know, I've been lifting since I was, you know, since, what, 2009, 2010, so 15, 14, 15 years. And that is not something anyone has ever said to me. And, and um, he was saying that it's really uncommon to think about it. But, like, from an anat anatomy standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. So I'm really excited for where we go with this. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Shoots.